I'm Hazel Wenzel, Regional Segment Marketing Manager for Talk, and I'm very pleased to have the opportunity today to present to you. And um, yeah, I would like to briefly talk about uh, the pandemic and how it will influence hygiene standards within the cleaning industry going forward. And also then give you some examples of our innovations that we will be showing at Interclean and how these can support the changes that we see over the coming months. At Talk, we're constantly striving to think ahead for, for today, for now, um, but also for tomorrow, for the future. So I'd like to share with you in the 10 minutes today how. The pandemic itself has brought many new challenges with it. Um, and as we know, and we've heard this week, obviously um, hygiene levels are going to be scrutinized much more than before. Um, a recent market research that we've done globally with um, thousands of respondents has showed us that 66% of people agree or strongly agree to the statement that they feel more unsafe using facilities with unhygienic public washrooms due to COVID-19. Um, so this will place obviously um, onus on businesses to take hygiene uh, very seriously and to also show that to their visitors. Higher expectations on hygiene from the pandemic will accelerate business transformation as we see it and drive these new behaviors around hygiene. Authorities are already revising or will set new standards um, and companies are now adapting going forward. I think the changes that we've all experienced over the coming weeks, so forced isolation or social distancing are going to shape habits with lasting effect in the future. Um, and that will really enable or put hygiene at the center of how businesses operate and serve their guests or their visitors. So on this slide, I'd like to share with you some key trends that we feel will affect our industry going forward. Firstly, hygiene will or has become a key promise for businesses. Cleanliness will be expected at all times and in all areas of the facility. Visitors will be expecting easy access to hand hygiene, and they'll also want to know what facility managers um, are doing in order to keep that facility as clean, as clean and hygienic as possible. So this will place um, an increased need for control on the facility manager, but also that he, can he or she can display how clean the facility is. Next, um, we see that there will be a trend towards decreasing face-to-face -face interactions or decreasing touch where possible. This would be a reduction in physical contact with objects or surfaces. You can imagine um, more um, self-opening doors, contactless payment, sensor taps, and more and more we see data-driven tools to make sure cleaners will also only touch surfaces where necessary. Facility spaces will be rethought and restructured as we see it. Um, and as a concrete example of this is obviously that this will be need to be done to ensure social distance. So we might expect the return of an office cubicle or more division, more diversified workplace design and need to increase um, monitoring of how visitors are moving within the building or using the building. All of this we see will it'll affect the cleaning routines. However, we see that cleanliness can be and will be an opportunity for us uh, to innovate and innovate further. Um, not only tech innovations can be used to ensure hygiene in public spaces, but also cleanliness will be used as a tool to innovate our offerings. An example of this might be innovative ways to support hand hygiene compliance, be it engaging training methods such as virtual reality training to ensure, to ensure um, methods and application or using technology itself to monitor whether hand hygiene compliance is taking place. Lastly, we see we will see new service measures within the industry. There will be a better need to understand traffic flows and ensure that the cleaners are able to, to clean um, if there's high traffic in high traffic areas, areas that are frequently used or touched um, spot cleaning or surface cleaning, and also to allow for cleaning during peak traffic. 
but avoiding unnecessary exposure of the cleaners. In such spaces, cleaning could ideally be frequency-based or data-driven technology, because this allows to help plan and adapt depending on how the space is being used. So we see that the new normal will bring, bring these cleaning requirements, such as cleaning of frequently touched or used areas, and data-driven tools can help to plan this more efficiently. It's clear that we need to secure these hygiene standards in, also to, in order to carry on with our lives or get back to everyday lives. Um, and on the other side of the crisis, people will be more and more demanding, obviously, workplaces that are clean, secure and comfortable. I'd like to share with you now an initiative, Stay Safe to Carry On, that we have ongoing now to support all the essential workers on the front line. I'd just like to highlight a couple of points with this initiative. Firstly, um, at SET, we're focusing on production to support the front line, um, to ensure the supply of products there. That would be within our key segments of, um, for example, the grocery segment, supermarkets, healthcare, and also government. Secondly, we're working tirelessly and continuously to spread knowledge around health and hygiene in public spaces. In the middle of the chart here, you can see industry-specific toolkits full of resources, knowledge, and tools, helping our customers to create a safer working environment. And lastly, we have ongoing training and knowledge programs, the Clean Care Program. Here we have um, industry insights, but also recommendations on the critical placement of dispensers. And an example of this training in the healthcare segment would be our virtual reality training for hand hygiene. This is one innovative way um, that we, together with leading hospitals and behavioral scientists, have developed a hand hygiene training. It's a virtual reality training based on the WHO five moments of hand hygiene. It's great because you learn in a very fun and engaging way, but it stimulates in that way of learning behavioral change um, and helps the nurses and physicians to experience in typical situations and imply the five moments of hand hygiene. Obviously, we're very proud this week um, that we've also been recognized by the Interclean jury, that they were very impressed um, and to quote them that they said, this is a very user-friendly method of maintaining hand hygiene compliance in healthcare settings. So we think we will see more of these innovative ways of ensuring hygiene and high levels of hygiene. If we look a little bit further when we're returning to our everyday lives, and as we see over the coming weeks and months, hopefully the lockdown will be easing, um, this is where we're looking at how, how can and how will the industry adapt um, to our new normal. So we believe that the digitalization of cleaning will play a crucial part in tomorrow's facility management. Talk offers an entry level cleaning software to talk digital cleaning plans to enable all, all businesses to see the benefits of digitizing cleaning. If you digitize your cleaning, you're providing a fast and easy way to manage cleaning routines and also for teams and managers to communicate between the teams in a very intuitive and inclusive way. And it frees up time, which also can then be used for much more value add activities. But not only digital cleaning plans, actually we believe that um, to, to help the new normal and support it better. Um, it will be the next level of cleaning, which is cleaning when it's when and where it's needed. So frequency based cleaning, cleaning will add the true value. Here, the example for us would be Talk Easy Cube, a world's leading facility management software. And this can provide true data about cleaning needs and help really help control operations. So sensors around the building and within, um, within dispensers and measuring people counters, measure visitor numbers and refill levels in the dispensers. Managers and cleaners alike can see very easily on a tablet exactly what needs to be serviced and where and when they need to clean. This allows the facility manager instant facility overview 
to plan and control and follow up with less time and effort. So the benefits, if we look at our new normal, are the fact that the, the facility can be cleaned or disinfected based on the true visitor numbers. And so therefore, hygiene can be maintained, even if within the building, there are obviously um, something happening that there's an unexpected flow of visitors in a certain area. So it's very dynamic in that aspect. Also, by doing that, you know, understanding how many people are in the facility at what times and how they're using it. This is a much better way of planning, and you can also plan in that way for minimized contact between your cleaning staff and visitors in the building. And lastly, with the dispensers, you can ensure a very high level of hand hygiene for all visitors in the building. Always, always ensuring that hand washing and hand drying products are available. The connected dispensers are replenished and refilled ready for use 99% of the time. But not only can data-driven cleaning help to, with cleaning efficiency, it can also provide some valuable insights. So I'd like to give you an example here of the Tröninger School in the Warburg municipality of Sweden. So not only did the system here help the cleaners um, make their working day less stressful and more efficient, they have within the school 89 toilets and about 2,500 toilet usages per day. Um, but from the data, they could clearly see that the number of visitors to the toilet was not corresponding to the consumption of soap and paper hand towels. And this was indicating that the students were not washing their hands frequently enough after using the toilets. So with this insight and talking with the educational staff, they were able to introduce an educational hand hygiene program. And now they do that regularly and can obviously monitor the development via the system. So it can be beneficial on many levels. So today I've given you an example of uh, yeah, how we see the pandemic may or will affect our lives and also um, what innovations we have to help us and support us with the new normal. These innovations, be it for example, our highest capacity dispenser on the market, which ensures that hand towels are always available, a first world, a world recycling service for hand towels, or as I mentioned in a bit more detail today, our digital um, and data-driven cleaning, as well as the VR hand hygiene training. These are the innovations that we will be sharing with you in November of Interclean. And also on the Interclean stage, we will be talking about hygiene and sustainability. Now, I hope that when we meet in November, we will have passed on or beyond the recovery stage of COVID-19. And then we can share with you how our innovations have been helping to keep the public and public spaces safe and secure. If you have any questions on anything I've presented today, then please feel free to reach out now or afterwards. And thank you very much for listening.